Today's goal is to educate you on the Deschutes Basin Habitat Conservation Plan. We will look at how we got here, what's been done so far, and what does the future look like. How did we get here? Let's start with some background on acronyms. ESA stands for the Endangered Species Act, which was passed by Congress in 1973 and signed into law by President Nixon. The intent of the act is to halt and reverse the trend towards species extinction. The act is implemented by the National Marine Fisheries Service for Marine Life and the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service for Terrestrial and Freshwater Species. A provision of the ESA provides for the issuance of an ITP, or Incidental Take Permit. An ITP is a permit issued by National Marine Fisheries, or U.S. Fish and Wildlife, under Section 10 of the ESA, to entities engaging in non-federal actions that may result in the take of an endangered or threatened species. An ITP requires a Habitat Conservation Plan. An HCP describes the steps the applicant will take to minimize and mitigate the impacts of the incidental take of the covered species. In 2002, a few irrigation districts in central Oregon joined together to form the Deschutes Basin Board of Control, referred to as the DBBC. The districts believed it would be in their best interest to join resources on projects that would benefit the community and result in water conservation. There are now eight irrigation districts that make up the Deschutes Basin Board of Control. The City of Prineville joined together with the DBBC to prepare the Deschutes Basin Habitat Conservation Plan and apply for the incidental take permits. These nine entities have over 155,000 acres of water rights and serve more than 17,000 patrons. The plan will address water management activities involving six separate reservoir projects in the river basin. HCP addresses Crane Prairie, Wikiup, Haystack, Crescent, Prineville, and Ochico reservoirs. A river basin is a region of land that water travels across both above and below ground and gathers in a central river on its way to the ocean. The Deschutes is the central river that flows to the Columbia and out to the ocean, making this the Deschutes River Basin. So when and why did the basin end up needing an HCP? In the 1960s, steelhead were extirpated upstream by the construction of the Pelton Round Butte Dam Complex. In 2007, a restoration project began to reintroduce steelhead from hatchery stock to their historic habitat. At about the same time, a decision was issued in a federal court case that provided hatchery fish could be treated the same as wild fish for the purposes of ESA listings and ESA protections. As a result, National Marine Fisheries, which has jurisdiction over marine species listed under the ESA, engaged with the districts to develop a habitat conservation plan so they could get an incidental take permit for the steelhead that were being reintroduced into their project areas. During the early phase of the HCP development, it was decided that bull trout should be added. This decision brought U.S. fish into the process because it has jurisdiction over freshwater species listed under the ESA. This also opened up additional funding opportunities for this costly effort. In 2009, the districts were aware that the Oregon spotted frog could be listed under the ESA at some point in the future, and so it was added to the list of species to be considered in the HCP, but it did not become a main focus until after it was listed as threatened in 2014. Three reservoirs have been targeted in recent litigation regarding potential harm to the Oregon spotted frog. The Bureau of Reclamation and the districts are working to address the potential harm. The three reservoirs have been operating since the early 1920s. Crane Prairie Dam was built in 1922 and rebuilt in 1940 and provides storage water for Central Oregon, Arnold, and Lone Pine irrigation districts. Crescent Lake Reservoir was built in 1922 and rebuilt in the 1950s and provides storage water for Tumalo Irrigation District and 
Wikiup Dam was built in 1949 and provides storage water for North Unit Irrigation District. The operation and management of these reservoirs can create flow fluctuations downstream of the reservoirs. These fluctuations can include higher summer flows as water is released to meet their delivery obligations, and lower flows in the winter months while water is being stored for the following year's irrigation needs. So what have we done so far? Since 2008, at the beginning of the HCP, there have been significant investments in conservation and flow restoration projects. In fact, these types of projects date back even further. Over the past 15 years, irrigation districts, conservation groups, and agencies have restored 80,000 acre-feet of water. That amount could fill 40,000 Olympic pools per year, over 26 billion gallons of water. Wychus Creek, Tumalo Creek, the Middle Deschutes, and the Crooked River have seen significant flow restoration through methods such as irrigation district efficiencies, in-stream leasing, and permanent water right transfers to in-stream use. In addition to improving summer flows, these efforts have reduced the reliance on stored water, which also benefits the Oregon spotted frog. Adaptive management projects will be key elements to solving the basin's water needs. The basin has seen significant flow restoration through methods such as Central Oregon Irrigation's release of water from Crane Prairie prior to the start of the irrigation season in 2015 to counteract drought-induced low flows in order to improve frog breeding conditions. And a pilot study by Tumalo and Central Oregon Irrigation Districts to release additional water from Crescent to study the benefits to frog breeding in Little Deschutes and Crescent Creek. Habitat restoration is also key to a successful habitat conservation plan and a healthy basin. The Deschutes Basin Board of Control has been working with the Forest Service on a pilot project to create habitat in Ryan Ranch. Pending the results of the pilot project, wetland habitat will be created and enhanced in the meadow. The location of this meadow is important given other known locations of the Oregon spotted frog. The Upper Deschutes River is the main focus of the Oregon Spotted Frog, but the HCP also includes fish located in the Crooked River, Wychus Creek, and the main stem Deschutes. In 2012, North Unit Irrigation, Central Oregon Irrigation, and the Deschutes River Conservancy broke ground on the first phase of the largest stream flow restoration initiative in Oregon. The initiative aims to restore stream flow to the Crooked River, benefiting the region's agricultural economy while permanently improving conditions for fish, wildlife, and recreation. In late 2014, President Obama signed into law the Crooked River Collaborative Water Security and Jobs Act of 2014. This law is the culmination of over 30 years of collaborative work by Ochico Irrigation District, the City of Prineville, Confederated Tribes of Warm Springs, and conservation groups. Key provisions of the law benefit fish and wildlife, including reintroduction of steelhead in the Crooked River. For 100 years, irrigators diverted 100% of the Wychus Creek's water before it reached sisters. Irrigation demands far exceeded water supplies, and parts of the creek often dried up during irrigation season. Since 1999, Three Sisters Irrigation District has worked with its partners to restore summer flows to Wychus Creek, providing water to support fish, wildlife, and recreation. Three Sisters Irrigation is now beginning to pipe the last 14,000 feet, or nearly three miles, of its main canal. When complete, it will have piped over 57 miles, or nearly 90% of its entire system of canals, and created in-stream water rights of 31 cubic feet per second in Wychus Creek. Section 7 of the ESA, called Interagency Consultation, is the mechanism by which federal agencies, such as the Bureau of Reclamation, ensure that the actions they take, including those they fund or authorize, do not jeopardize the continued existence of any listed species.
These federal action agencies consult with U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service and or the National Marine Fisheries Service on federal actions that may affect listed species. The Bureau of Reclamation, which has ownership interests in the Wikiup and Crane Prairie dams and reservoirs, initiated a Section 7 consultation in 2015 with U.S. Fish regarding federal actions involving the Oregon spotted frog. Bureau of Reclamation submitted an interim proposal to U.S. Fish, which considers revisions to the 1938 Interdistrict Agreement involving the management of Wikiup and Crane Prairie reservoirs. The proposal would allow for time to finish work on the HCP, including ongoing research on long-term solutions and the preparation of an environmental impact statement under the National Environmental Policy Act, which is required for U.S. Fish to approve an HCP. What's next? Nearly $8 million have been invested in data gathering to help inform conservation efforts going forward. U.S. Fish and Wildlife is currently working with HCP applicants to study Oregon spotted frog needs and potential effects of reservoir management changes. In addition, there are three studies currently underway. The Deschutes Basin Board of Control and its partners have invested approximately $5 million to fund the necessary steps to apply for an incidental take permit. HCP preparation requires biological studies, flow modeling, development of conservation measures, as well as compiling the information for an environmental impact statement. The Basin Study Work Group has secured a $1.5 million grant to assess projected risks to water supply from climate change and future water supply and demand needs. The effort also includes the evaluation of opportunities to increase efficiencies and create strategies to meet future water needs. The Farmers Conservation Alliance is using an Energy Trust of Oregon grant to evaluate and propose a system-wide irrigation modernization strategy, as well as evaluate water and energy conservation potential. What is the process of the HCP going forward? The Section 7 interagency consultation that Bureau of Reclamation initiated with U.S. Fish is estimated to be completed in late 2016. In tandem, the Deschutes Basin Habitat Conservation Group continues to work on a final draft HCP proposal, and it is also estimated to be completed in late 2016. Once the final draft HCP has been submitted, U.S. Fish and National Marine Fisheries will proceed with its review process, which includes the National Environmental Policy Act review of the draft environmental impact statement and a public comment period. This is targeted for completion in late 2017. Any required modifications will then be made, and the final HCP and EIS will be completed in mid-2018. U.S. Fish and National Marine Fisheries would then do a final review and issue the incidental take permits in late 2018. Over the next four years, as the HCP process moves forward, the districts will continue to work with their partners on conservation projects that will help restore habitat and support agriculture and recreation in the Deschutes River Basin.